Hello, Prof Mo here. I'm here to explain to you how to draw Lewis structures. You'll get more lessons by visiting chemjoint.com. So here are the rules of drawing Lewis structures. Let's say that you needed to draw the Lewis structure of a molecule like ammonia. Ammonia is NH3. How would you draw it? How would you draw the bonding connect connections within ammonia? The first step is to find the total number of valence electrons. If you look at the periodic table, the nitrogen will have a valency of 5. Alternatively, you can draw the electronic configuration of nitrogen. Nitrogen has atomic number 7, so it will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p, uh, 7, 2p3. You see the outermost shell is the second shell. Those are the valence electrons, we call them. These are the core electrons. These are the valence electrons, the outermost. They take part in bonding. 2 plus 3 is 5. Alternatively, go to the periodic table. You'll see that nitrogen is going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nitrogen will be found somewhere here. Uh, in the periodic table. So it has a valency of 5. Hydrogen is found in main group 1. So we'll say that the nitrogen is bringing in 5 electrons. You have 3 hydrogens each bringing in 1 electron. So the total valence electrons in this case will be 8 electrons that will take part in connection of the elements. Step number one is done. Step number two, you want to draw the skeleton of the molecule connected with two electrons, paying attention to symmetry. The only way I would pay attention to symmetry is to put nitrogen in the structure. By the way, hydrogens and halogens, halogens meaning fluorine, chlorine, bromine, they are usually outside the molecule. That it's giving me some symmetry because I can cut this way and reflect these two hydrogens across the cutting plane. And now I'm going to connect them with two electrons because we know that two electrons make a bond. Then we are on number three. I calculate the number of remaining electrons from the total valence. See, we have to use eight. I've only used six. And usually you want to pay attention to octet rule which is the next one to know where the remainder electrons will go. So I'm drawing what I had initially. Those are the six electrons. Hydrogen is happy with two electrons, duet state, but nitrogen needs to be octate. We are remaining with two. Those two are given to nitrogen. They are not taking part in bonding. And then we are on number five. Um, Oh, we did 4 and 5. We gave the lone pair to the central atom. Uh, it doesn't need more because we've used all. Now we will have to... Uh, this is where Lewis would stop. Uh, Kekel went further and converted the lone pair of elect... Uh, the bonding pair of electrons to be bonds. So those red ones will be bonds because they have taken part in connecting the two elements and one lone pair which is not bonded so this is the lewis structure actually this is the lewis structure of, um, of nh3 but it's also acceptable to draw this showing the bond and the formula for nh3 will end up having a lone pair of nitrogen okay let's do another one let's do the lewis structure of h2o again if you look at your periodic table the oxygen is in main group 6. I'm not going to draw the whole periodic table. Just count 1, 2, skip all this. A 3, then 4, then 5. When you count 6, you'll see oxygen somewhere there. Okay. So oxygen has a valency of 6. It's only 1. So it brings 6 electrons. And then you have 2 hydrogens. Each hydrogen is bringing one electron because it's on the first 
group may column, the total valence electrons used in bonding will be eight electrons. So that is step number one. Step number two, we have to draw connectivity in space, an arrangement of elements in space, paying attention to symmetry. So symmetry will have me put oxygen in the middle. Like I say, hydrogens, halogens are usually put outside. And then I will have to do step number th uh, three with step number two. So I'll put these two electrons there to at least make a bond. The shared electrons make a covalent bond. The hydrogens are happy, as you can see. They are seeing the two electrons, but the oxygen is not happy because it needs to be octate. So we have to satisfy step three and four. We are remaining with, we have used four, we are remaining with four to account for. So we go to step number, number three, maybe even four. So we will take our oxygen that is in the middle. We're going to take it and give it the four to make it octet because no other element in the structure needs more electrons. And then step number five, uh, Lewis would basically stop there. But we usually go one step ahead to show the bonding electrons as lines because two electrons make a bond. And then the non-bonding ones, those are called lone pair of electrons. Okay, those are lone pair of electrons. By the way, usually you always want to do formal charges. If you try to do the formal charge on oxygen here, formal charge of the oxygen equals to the valency of oxygen, number of non-bonding electrons, those are the lone pair electrons, minus number of bonds, it's zero. Water does not have charge. You would have done the same with ammonia that we did before. So that will be step seven, actually, not step six. That will be step seven. So overall, I will draw, Lewis would have drawn this molecule just as this one on top here, but we end up drawing it like this. And then they, if he failed to show the geometry that is described in another video, watch out for the video in the YouTube account or on this lecture page if you are on the website. This, you, if you see it in my website, uh, structure and bonding, molecular shape and electronic shapes. That's for H2O. Let's do another one. So for the set, third example, what if you are asked to draw the Lewis structure of NH4 plus? This time the molecule is charged. Like I described, nitrogen has a valency of five. Electrons is found in the fifth main group of the periodic table. If you count one, two, skip the transition metal elements, three, four, you'll find nitrogen in main group five, you know. So hydrogens will have that of one because hydrogen is found in main group one. There are four of them. So, so far we have nine electrons, but whenever you have a positive charge, you want to adjust the total number of electrons by subtracting the number of positive charges. So we end up with eight valence electrons to account for. So again, remember the positive charge rule. You have to subtract that positive charge from your total valence electrons. That's the new information. So that's step one. Step two, let's find some symmetry. So uh, hydrogens, like I said, they sit externally. And then we use the electrons to at least make a bond. Okay, two electrons make a bond. It seems like I've used the eight that I needed to account for. Okay, and I would go ahead and do the connectivity to show what we call the Kekel structure, which is an improved Lewis. Okay, Kekel structure, which is an improved Lewis. And then I will do the formal charge calculations of the nitrogen, the hydrogens. 
when they have one bond the formal charge is zero so the formal charge of this nitrogen equals to the valency of nitrogen minus non-bonding electrons there's no lone pair minus number of bonds there are four of them i will end up with plus one so the structure of ammonia will end up looking like this okay finally kekel will show it like that but lewis would have stopped here okay so we put a plus charge there because that's what we determined from our calculation put a plus charge there okay let's do another example what if in this example what if we want to show the lewis structure of a carbonate Carbon is in main group 4 of the periodic table, so it's going to bring 4 electrons. You have 3 oxygens. Each of those has a valency of 6. And then uh, we would add the 2 electrons, these ones here. When you combine all these, you'll get a total of valence electrons which are 24 valence electrons to account for so that is step number one step number two we want to look for symmetry so i'll put the carbon in the middle so that there's some sort of symmetry and then i would want to use two electrons to connect each of them at least so they are not just floating around in air i have not used all electrons so i'll go to step number three calculate the number of electrons from the total remaining so i've used six so 24 minus six that gives you what 18 electrons the carbon and the oxygens are not surrounded by eight electrons the rule to determine who gets the extra electrons first is electronegativity which is the affinity the liking of electrons attraction of electrons by an element and atom of, of an element you should remember that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon across the, that row of the periodic table so we need to satisfy the octet rule of those oxygens before we satisfy the carbon the carbon has to wait so we have 18 to account for so one two three four five six now there's eight around that one two three four five six eight around that one two three four five six eight around that and if i count all of them i find that i've taken care of 24 valence electrons but the carbon is still unhappy because you can see it only has six surrounding electrons so one of these oxygens has to donate and uh, to to donate two electrons for sharing so that's what we are doing in this step let me see we are actually on step six in this case not step four so i'll come here and say step six after the sharing the top oxygen is left with two lone pair of electrons but we do have four electrons shared okay all right so now the carbon is happy as you can see there's now eight electrons around it and i can go ahead and show you that you have a double bond because each two electrons is a bond and then you have a single bond any electrons that don't form that don't participate in bond forming will be lone pairs after this you want to calculate the formal charges so the formal charge on this oxygen will be six minus non-bonding electrons there are four minus number of bonds there are two it's zero so that oxygen has no charge and then i'll do the same for 
this oxygen, the formal charge is valency of oxygen is six on the periodic table. It has six electrons not taking part in bonding. And then you have one bond is negative one. Actually for both of these, it will be the same case. So on these ones, they will carry a negative formal charge, negative formal charge. This will be the best Kekel stroke Lewis structure. And that's why you see that the carbonate has a charge of minus two because you have two negatives. So you have a carbon and three oxygens with two negatives overall. Okay. So sometimes you might need to share, do sharing. Let's do one organic structure. What if you need to draw the Lewis structure of C2H6? Carbon, each carbon has a valency of four, so it will be twice of four, you'll get eight electrons. Each hydrogen has a valency of one, each hydrogen has a valency of one, so you have how many hydrogens? You have six hydrogens. So you get six out of that. Total number of valence electrons will be 14 valence electrons. Step one is done. Step two, we want to write the elements in space looking for symmetry. So I predict that the, that my carbons will be in there. By the way, most authors would say put the most electronegative element at the middle, but it's not always the case. So don't stick on that rule. So step three, I would want to at least make a bond. Actually, that's still under step two in my case. I want to at least make a bond by sharing some of those valence electrons. Two electrons will always make a bond. Boom, boom, boom. Lewis would have stopped there. Improved Lewis structure, which is what we call the Kekel structure. will go ahead and draw any bonding electrons to be bonds. By the way, you should know that we've used all the valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. Although that's not the correct 3D drawing, but that's where you'd stop with Lewis structure. Okay. Let's do one more organic. Let's say that you want to draw the Lewis structure of C2H2. Again, you have two carbons, each carbon bringing a valency of four because its carbon is found in the main group, fourth main group of the periodic table. So the total, the carbons will together bring eight electrons. You have two hydrogens. Each hydrogen brings one valent electron because it's found in the first main group of the periodic table. So total I have to account for 10 valence electrons in my bonding process. Step number one, done. Step number two, draw them at least in space, going for symmetry. So I put the carbons in the middle because they can take more bonds than the hydrogens. I told you hydrogens typically go outside. And the structure, even halogens, the chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, will also go as the structure by default. So I've only used six bonds to at least make a bond using two electrons in step two. But I have remaining electrons, which happens to be four. The hydrogens are usually happy with two electrons on them, but the carbon here this carbon, for example, only has four electrons. So is the other one. It has four electrons around it. So to satisfy that, we want to make those carbons octets by giving them extra electrons. 
So I have four more to go, but I have to evenly give them to the carbons like this. Now you realize I've used all the 10 electrons that I was supposed to account for, but still my carbons are not happy. This one has six. This one has six around it. So there has to be some sharing. You have to share. The two carbons have to share for both of them to be comfortable. So what I'll do, I'll take one of those lone pairs, lone pairs meaning unbonded electrons. I have to take one of those and share. So I'm sharing. I'm trying to do step six, actually. I've already shared the ele remaining electrons on the central atom, but it didn't help as much. So I'm going to be left with, okay, so after sharing, I see that this guy still is a sextet. There's, on, there's still six electrons around him, and there's also still six electrons. Uh, actually, this one is happy. The left one is happy because this one has eight electrons around it. The four on this side, two here, and two on top. So because this one is unhappy and it's crying, it's crying, 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 we have to share the other lone pair inward like that. So we're still sharing. We are still on step six. That is should be step six, sorry. We are still sharing. So in here you'll have three shared pairs of electrons. After I drop this here, you'll have one, two, three lone pairs. So I'm suggestively drawing them like this for purposes of showing bonds next. So now assessing, you'll see that this one has eight electrons and also the right carbon has eight electrons. They're happy, happy. The hydrogens are happy with two electrons anyway, duet state. Carbons are now octet. So Lewis would have stopped here so KKL came, came about and said, hey, we need to show the bonds now. So KKL-Lewis structure will look like that. And that is your acetylene. I believe that's how it's written. Used for welding, used in welding. I hope that helped. Practice, there are so many structures you need to practice during Lewis structures, but that's the basic idea. You might want to find the formal charges. If I can show you an example of a formal charge of this carbon. Carbon is in valence, is in main group 4 with a valency of 4. Here there's no bonding, non-bonding electrons, no lone pairs, no non-bonding electrons. But I do have 1, 2, 3, 4 around the carbon. It's 0. So, so no need to show formal charges. I hope that helped. See you soon for more lesson again. Visit chemjoint.com for more exciting lessons. Bye.